Okay, welcome back. We're going to have a look at another G.I. Joe classified action figure. This time we'll be looking at figure number 02, Snake Eyes. Now this is a fan favorite, and uh, evidenced by the fact that there are no fewer than five different versions of this particular character in the G.I. Joe classified line. Um, he started off as uh, a Spec Ops Commando back in 1982, but by the mid-80s he had become a ninja, and that's uh, what we're looking at. We're looking at the second version, based off the second version of Snake Eyes, with the characteristic face shield over his, his mask, and uh, the, uh, uh, the ninja sword, and the ninja motifs, and we'll talk a little about that. Uh, I think this is a really cool action figure. Uh, this is one of three different Snake Eyes in uh, the collection here. Uh, the uh, very first G.I. Joe classified figure to be released was a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Uh, it's a Snake Eyes that came with a huge array uh, of weaponry. Uh, that's retailing for about $150 plus on eBay right now, which is one of the reasons uh, I don't have it. But uh, this, is a, this is a great figure, and there are at least two different versions of this figure. One of them apparently has some red somewhere on his head. I don't know where. Uh, all I know is uh, this must be version 2, because there's no red on Snake Eye's head on this uh, particular figure. Talk about his accessories here in a minute. Like all the classified figures, he's highly posable, very articulate, uh, near human ranges of motion, except at the waist, really. I mean, he can, he can swivel at the waist, and he can do that, but... The, just, uh, I, I kind of feel like the uh, uh, the Action Force figures have better waist articulation than the G.I. Joe classified figures. Um, but this character, this particular figure, has a lot to offer as far as uh, accessories. Uh, we'll talk about the, the, the weapons in a moment. He has some, some very soft plastic accessories like these, uh, holst the holster and uh, the scabbard here on his on his legs. Those are removable and uh, we'll talk about that again in a moment. It comes with a, a, a pretty plain knife. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. It's not very sharp either, so it's all right. And uh, he also comes with a, 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 almost a ru it's almost a rubbery material belt that's easily removable. He also has some armbands that come off. And this bandolier with the uh, grenade. I don't know how well you can even see this on camera because of uh, the color scheme here. Uh, the backpack actually threads through the uh, bandolier and then attaches to the uh, through the, the hole in the figure's back. I, I, I find that a little troublesome. It's it's actually easier just to put the backpack straight in and just let the uh, bandolier fit snugly, hang snugly on his shoulder. It, it's going to wobble around as a result, but it, I, I do feel like that kind of would would look a little better. And the, the backpack is uh, pretty nice, and there is a sword scabbard attached to that. It is removable. Nice detail on the scabbard, too. And there is that ninja clan symbol that both Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, his arch-rival, have uh, tattooed on, on, on their arms. Um, now, he also comes with... Um, I'm loath to call this a samurai sword. I mean, that looks more like a, uh, a medieval cutlass, in my opinion, but uh, not very detailed. Um, but that, of course, will... Going here. I'm not going to try to put these in his hands. Like all the classified figures, uh, I have trouble getting the weapons in and out of their hands because of the uh, uh, of the rigidity of the uh, of the plastic used there. Heating the hands up really helps in making it more supple, so you can open their hands up and get their weapons in. Then mash it. You know, get the trigger fingers in the uh, uh, on the triggers on on some of the weapons. But he does come with uh, this. Uh, weapon. I'm not very impressed with that. Uh, it does attach to the pistol. Now, the pistol's all right because it comes with that uh, uh, suppressor or the silencer on it. But you can see there's a hole in it where you can actually attach it to this other weapon. I don't think I'm even going to fool with that right now. You get the gist there. But even now, the backpack is trying to come out because it's threaded through that uh, bandolier. Um, I appreciate the silver and red highlights on this figure so that he's not just completely uh, uh, black. I mean, that would be great in, in you know when trying to be stealthy, but uh, aesthetically, uh, having said that, I think the Commando version of the Snake Eyes figure is almost entirely black with just maybe a little G.I. Joe symbol painted on him. Uh, but we'll uh, look at that figure down the road. I think he's far later in the... Uh, in the numbering series, and um, that version of Snake Eyes comes with a companion. You'll enjoy that. 
Um, but there you go. There's Snake Eyes. Uh, nothing wrong with this figure. Um, uh, as always, when I uh, the first thing when I pick one of these up and look at it, uh, my first impression will be, do I recognize this as one of the characters from G.I. Joe, the cartoon back in the 1980s, or the toys, or the uh, uh, comic books? And in this case, absolutely. Uh, there's no mistaking Snake Eyes. And I do feel like they did a good job uh, representing that fact. And perhaps modernizing him just a little bit as far as the uh, accessories and the uh, and the, the design used on this. Um, just take a moment to admire him. Um, now this, uh, fortunately, this figure kind of stands up on his own without too much trouble. A lot of classified figures do not because they have very, very weak ankles and or hips. Uh, this one's all right, and maybe I just got lucky in that regard. Uh, I have taken all the soft goods accessories off this figure and uh, put them on my Action Force uh, Spec Ops Trooper just to see what that would look like, and it actually does look really good. It fits fine. Uh, you can even get the belt on without having to take this thing apart at the waist. So I, I enjoyed that, but there's a sort of a aesthetics comparison. These are about the same size, as you can see there. And uh, uh, nice companion pieces, really. Maybe Snake Eyes has a, a Spec Ops backup. Uh, or maybe I could put Bone Collector's Mask on this guy, and, and we've got an arch, a new arch villain for Snake Eyes. You know, all sorts of things we can do in, in that regard. And uh, I don't know why I'm showing you this. This is a, a weapon from uh, the Commando version of Snake Eyes we won't see for some time. But I, I, I like this weapon better than the one that comes with this one as far as displaying them with. But again, that's just my opinion, and that's just me. Uh, so there you go, folks. Snake Eyes, one of five different versions of this character in the G.I. Joe Classified series. And I can almost guarantee there will be more down the road. Uh, I wish they wouldn't do that. Uh, there's plenty of other characters that fa I think fans and, and customers, toy collectors, would like to see rather than yet another Snake Eyes. But... You, you can almost count on it. There'll be different versions. There's still the uh, the late 80s version of Snake Eyes with the the, kni the silver knives across his chest in a cross pattern. That's They're sure to make that as well. And um, they, they can play up the whole rivalry between the two uh, ninjas, Snake Eyes versus Storm Shadow, which, again, Snake Eyes originally was not a ninja. He was, he was just a Spec Ops commando, and they, they changed the lore uh, sometime in the mid-80s to make him a... A ninja, and, you know, what can I say, you know, Gen X kids my age ate that up, and I suppose that's why he's such a popular character. So there you go, folks. Snake Eyes. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Talk to you soon.